Now the length of it, well, let's put it about a four foot. It's a long staircase, but it's very, very shallow. Our width is 36 inches, the same as our doors. And we'll offset it into 18. Negative 18. So it just sits nice and flush within our doors. And now comes the process of getting the right height. So we only want about that much height. However, we want fewer razors, so we have to unpin at least one of these. You can either have the overall height staying the same, the riser height staying the same, or the riser count. However, I don't really want the I, w I don't want the overall height to change. I like it the way it is right now. So we lock that by hitting this little pin over here, and we drop down the riser height, our riser count. And there we go. We got four really long, shallow steps. Um, our generate geometry. This is just stuff that you can add onto it. Stringers the carriage. Stringers go on the side of this. I'm going to all cue to isolate this. Very easily shortcut so you can see it better. And zoom in on it. Stringers are just the side things like that. Carriage is the under is the piece of wood under it that holds it downstairs together. So I'll turn on both of those. Handrails, of course, just basic handrails as you can see up there. Those are quite high handrails, but I'm going to turn them off so it doesn't really matter anyways. And these few pop-up or open-up windows are the parameters for your carriages, your stringers, and your, your uh, railings. However, first we're going to go down here to steps. This is just the thickness of the steps. As you can see, really thin, really thick. And I'm going to drop that down to about 0.75. And that will be our steps right there. So we have stringers and carriage turned on. The links will be 48 or width will be 36. Our overall rise height will be 5.96, however 6 is close enough. And then our riser count will be 5. Remember you have to pin the overall height after you set that properly and then change the riser count after that. If you don't do it that way, you're going to get some really funky looking stairs and it'll never actually work out properly. So there's our staircase. I'm going to, so I can easily rotate around there. And oh, there's a bit of clipping going on in there, so we might drop down just a touch. Maybe about like that. And he walks out straight onto the staircase. Now, no one actually likes this little hole in here, so I'm going to quickly, quickly fix that up by just throwing in a quick cylinder on the edge. I'm going to go to my left viewport, make a cylinder just about like that big, so about six inches wide. Drag it out. I'm going to actually drag out the length of it properly when I'm in there. We're going to set its zero position way back here, so about 215. Since that's half of my 430 width, we're going to have this height being 430, since that's the actual width of it. And we're going to change, turn down the height segments, turn up the sides to about 24 or 36, so it's actually nice and smooth. As you can see, it's clipping through there, so we'll pull this down a bit, pull it back a bit, just until it's not really doing any problematic clipping. And I don't really like that. I'm going to pull it just a touch. Pull forward just a touch. And pull it down. And there we go. And there we are. This I'm going to switch over from these stairs. I'm going to switch over from open to closed. And what this does is it closes off the staircase. I'm going to I'll cue that again. It closes off the staircase from the bottom and box would do almost the exact same thing, however it drops it all the way down. Open is just the stairs. Closed is with the stairs with nothing underneath them. And we'll zoom in on that again to make it up. And we'll move them up just a touch so there's no actual staircase between them. And the doors don't actually clip. It just looks like they do. Alright, so we have our staircase, our deck, our floor, our walls, our windows, very quick and very easy to do. Next thing I'm going to do is generate the floor. So go to the website that's Floor Generator. You will have to create an account, but it is very much worth it to for this one tool. It's so easy to create floors from nothing, really. So I'm going to go and run that script. So I'm going to go run script. And wherever you save that script from installing the Floor Generator, for me it's under Base Card. Just under my tutorials file. For you it's anywhere where you saved it. Just double click on your floor generator version 1 and it brings up this dialog box. So first is the size of your actual flooring, so like your boards. So what you're going to do is something very simple. 
I'm going to first isolate out this plane that I've created for the floor and go create. And as you can see, there is three or four boards here, but that's not exactly at all what we want, which is very true. And so this is the size of our floors, which we want is about we want about six foot floors. So 72 inches is about six feet. And then we want a width of about six inches for each of our floors. You can see this isn't updating. It's because they don't have interactive update turned off. So if you wanted to interactively update, just hit interactive update and everything will automatically update as you update it. However, I just like hitting that update button. But I'm going to leave interactive update on for purposes of this tutorial. Now, as you see, we have six by four, or six by six, six by and a half foot, six foot by half foot boards of flooring. Very nicely created. You can see there's a nice little bevel on the top of it, and there's some actual thickness to it. However, this looks offset. This looks way too like proper. Looks like it was laid way too nicely. So I find a good offset is around 40. Doesn't actually look like it's offset if you go up to 50. So it's either both sides are almost the exact same, but it doesn't look like it's just one, two, three. It gives a bit nicer of an offset. Our rotation under variation per board rotates the board itself. As you can see, there might be a bit of variation. However, you can't really see it from here. Your offset, of course, offsets the board in the X direction. And the X and the Y usually are the same. Tilt is a really cool tool that tilts up the board. It doesn't give you some really neat effects for, like, if you want a dock that's kind of breaking apart and you destroy the dock with all the tilting. And the overlap is how much you're actually willing to allow the board to overlap when you the rotation or the variation. See, as I turn on my overlap and I turn on the rotation of the boards, you can tell that they are starting to overlap very quickly. I don't want them to overlap at all because this is a very nicely newly laid floor. This is under the general. The scale is the scale of our boards. We can drop it down. We can pull it up. However, since I set the scale properly up here, 72 inches for 6 feet and 6 inches for half a foot wide, I like it like that. Now, the direction is the direction of the board, of course. I can make it go kind of on an angle. You can make it go 90. It's just how the board is pointing. The row offset I already told you is how much the, one row is offset from the next. So if you have about 50, the offset always half, 60, 70, and it's just offsets the row. Zero has no offset, and as you can see, they just all line flat up. However, I like 40 the best, so I'm going to use that. Offset Y and X offsets the actual boards themselves. You can offset the Y, offset the X. Really doesn't do too much, especially for a floor like this. However, if you have multiple floors, it works much better. Now, our last part is our extrude, bevel, and weld UVs. This is for the UV mapping using the multi-texture. However, since in this tutorial we're not going to do too much on the texturing, we're just going to throw basic material on it. I'm not going to go too in-depth with this. However, with this weld, extrude, and bevel, we're going to have this first one is the threshold of the bevel. The second one is the height of the extrude. This is the threshold of the weld, sorry. So if you want the vertices to weld together, if I turn it up, you can see them start welding together. However, I don't want the vertices to weld together. We don't have a poly limit on this thing, so it doesn't really matter. However, I do want my extrude to be shorter, so we go about 0.5. And I do want my weld to be, my bevel to be a bit less, because you can see there's some overlapping right here, and I'm going to turn that down to 2.25. There you go. It's a nicely laid floor, very quick and very fast with this very good floor generator. I'm going to exit my isolation mode, close out my floor generator, and there we go. We have a floor created. I'm going to save out my scene because I haven't done that yet. And two tutorials and save that out nicely. Now the next thing I'm going to do is create a railing so for this deck and then some stairs that go down to it and we will be done. So my next thing to do is go under the splines create two splines for our railing. After that I will show you where I'll tell you to download that software and we will get to work with the rail clone tool. So splines, we'll create a line and these lines will define where our railing is. So we kind of want a line like railing like this about here to about halfway like that. The next railing we want is about here to about the corner and back. Just kind of a mirror image, just very basic railing. Now go download that i2 software, the rail clone light we won't be using any of the Railcomb Pro options, so works just fine, and we'll just use one of their built-in railings that works beautifully. So, after that is, after it's installed, make sure you install it to the proper location and everything. You should be able to restart Max. You're going to have to restart Max. 
go under geometry and under geometry you should see this thing called i2 software click on i2 software click on rail to clone light and this is so easy to make beautiful beautiful railings and rails and everything so first what you do is you select a style and pick a spline and then it creates the object so first we select our style from the library go to select and I'm going to use architecture, railings, exterior. I can see these are all with the Rail Clone Pro option, which is a lot of railings. However, the vinyl option is open for the free, so we double click on that. You can see it up in here. And then we click on the spline we want to put it on. We'll click on the spline. And what it should do is create our rail clone. However, it didn't that time. So we select this, double click on vinyl handrail, and select our spline. There it is. As you can see, our railing has appeared. Very easy, very simple, and I'll show you some really neat tricks that it can happen with afterwards. So let's do it with this line as well. Rail clone light, select our railing, final handrail, click on the spline. Right there, beautifully and in. And now we will drop these in nicely. So go into our left viewport or front viewport, wherever we get a nice side view on, drop these onto the the deck itself. Click on our other one, drop that one down as well. And you can see there's a bit of a problem here. Kind of, you know, I don't know if it goes too far, but it seems like, now oh, this one goes too far right here. So we'll go under here. This is how beautiful it is. Well, after you're done with the rail clone, you can go back to your spline. If I can select my spline, I'm going to go F3. Select the spline inside it. I should have made that in better location, but it's okay. Select your spline inside it and then double click and click on the vertices. And you can just drag the vertices and the rail will follow. That is how simple it is. You don't have to worry about having so many polys to move or vertices to move. Just create the rail. It's like a loft effect, but much cleaner and much better. And there it is. It just set up nicer. And that is our deck. Next I will be doing is a staircase for the front part of it under i2 software stairs this will be a spiral stair down I want about 8 foot tall spiral stair down so first you drag out your stairs themselves and then drag them up now that doesn't look that good it looks kind of a rackety staircase it might look good in some other options but I don't like it for this so I'm going to go under my modify panel first I do want them open I do also want some stringers on the side because those just look so much better with stringers and then what I also want is a center pole and as you can see the center pole is in there very nicely I don't need any handrails it doesn't look that good for these and you'd have to put on some you'd have to put on some posts themselves and you can turn it clockwise or counterclockwise I like it having counterclockwise the radius I'm going to bump it up to about, about 40 inches as you can see there's a nicer bend to the stairs the revolutions depends how many times it goes around 0.75 is usually good enough. You can do a full round by just hitting one, but that just starts looking weird. So 0.75 is usually a good one to go with. And the width is the width of the staircase. You can increase the width of the staircase going like that. 24 inches should be good enough. And let's make it about 30 inches. And now we got our layout of our basic staircase. Next thing we need to do is drop the rise of each of the staircase, the riser count or the riser height, and yeah, about, we'll drop, we'll up the riser height to about 16 or 14, and we want the staircase to be about 10 feet tall, but we want the riser count to stay the same, so pin the riser count and put 120 inches in there. That is a nice 10 foot tall staircase. Next we will, we don't have any problems with the carriage at work, it looks well enough as it is. However, what you can do is make it wider, or make it deeper, make it less deep, and then make it wider, make it skinnier. Very simple things there, however I like it the way it looks. Right about there. Excuse me. And the stringers you can do the exact same thing with. Now center pole I don't want about that thick, I want about yeah, 6 inches in radius. And there goes another set, nice center pole for the entire staircase as well. I'm going to turn the height of center pole and drop it down just a bit below so when the staircase lines up with the deck, it doesn't have the center pole sticking straight out. So now we'll just line that up with the deck. Rotate that away just a bit more like that. And line it up in like so. There we are. And drop it down. So 
like going down another elevator. Oh, there we are. And going down the elevator. It's all nicely set up. It's a pretty small staircase, but you just walk down it. Looks good enough. And now I want these two rails to go right to the edge of it. So, the beautiful thing about Rail Clone is you select the spline again, click the vertice, drag it out until you feel proper. So, about there. I'm going to do that for the other side. Grab the spline, select the vertice, pull it out. And there is our basic setup.